So first off, whenever I made this purchase of $250 of plants, I thought I was gonna have like, maybe need two cars worth to pick it up. Now you experienced gardeners are gonna laugh whenever I show you this because here's what I got. I mean, it's a good haul, but I thought it was gonna be so much more. <laughs> okay, so got the plants out of the trunk. Next step is to kind of figure out where I wanna place them, then getting them in the ground. So what I did over the winter is I put down a bunch of cardboard on top of where all of this ivy has been coming in. So that helped to stunt the growth of some of that so that I have space to plant things. I did work around this ajuga that I love. I think it's so pretty. It's all in bloom right now, attracting all the bees already. And then as you can see, I have a bunch of ferns up here. Last weekend, I put this path in just from finding rocks around my yard already. So I think I'm going to start to just fill in this bed with some of these native plants. I'm a little bit worried that I'm not gonna be able to tell the difference between the native plants and just what's vines, but I'm sure I can figure it out, right? Surely. a lot of these plants placed and half of them, well I'd say more than half of them, don't have the little ID card on them. So I'm going to get my iPad for reference because I went ahead and created a whole digital notebook on everything that I ordered and what all the plants look like along with info cards on them so I know what's what. The other thing that I have is on my iPhone I have a little plant identifier so I think that that's also going to help me figure out what some of these baby plants are that I have no idea how to identify. I didn't order any mint. Oh, this is the bee balm. So I'm so glad that I have all of this reference because it's got me so excited about how some of this stuff is gonna look. It's reminding me of where I went to place some of the things that I wasn't quite sure about. Let's get it going. I'm starting to feel a little overwhelmed, but what I'm going to do is get all of this place and we're gonna get it all in the ground. garden center and then buy some mulch and also I have my eyes peeled for maybe a witch hazel bush or a forsythia. I was so overwhelmed by this garden project. In fact, we're having some other landscaping done in our front yard by professionals because there's some water flow stuff that needs to be addressed. And I had them estimate out what it would be to build out this pollinator garden for me and they estimated between four and $6,000. I shouldn't feel too bad whenever I'm spending a few hundred bucks on this thing because A, I really want it, and B, I'm so glad that I'm DIYing it because I feel closer to it. It's like my baby, my project. I was incredibly overwhelmed by the whole thing, so I recruited best friend Liz, who is such a gardener, She's got such a green thumb, an eye for design. We work together as graphic designers. 
and she came in last weekend and helped me really organize my plant list and what I want. And some of the things that she asked me is, what is it that you want it to look like? And so I do kind of want it to look a little bit wild. She asked me what my favorite colors are, <laughs> greens and purples and yellows. I love those colors in a garden, maybe a little pops of orange here and there, but I just love lots of different colors of green. Now we narrowed down the list. I placed my order and now I'm placing everything in the garden and I'm just using my eye for design. So just like I would whenever designing a brand platform or anything else, I'm thinking about composition and color and clustering things and group and where I can have visual impact, where I need height and where I need more ground cover. So truly, I'm just using the principles of design to help me here. I'm also just trusting that nature can do her thing, that I'm going to get these plants in the ground. They are going to know what to do and they are going to grow and bloom and be beautiful. Fingers crossed. But also, Liz really inspired me and empowered me to make mistakes. I can always move things later. Some things won't survive and that is okay, but we're going to try our hand at this and it's not going to cost four to six thousand dollars. I'm also saying this to justify coming into the garden center here and maybe spending a few hundred more bucks on some beautiful plants. Okay, they have some bigger, more established bee balm. And then look at these foxgloves. I do kind of want that like immediate satisfaction. Ooh, pretty. Look, there's already a bee. Look at that bee. Is it a sign? Should I get this one? Maybe. Okay, I'm not here for this stuff, but I cannot get enough of all of this cypress and juniper. I want this. I want to bring this home. $450. I love this stuff so much. I mean, look at this. I used to fantasize about working in a garden center. I mean, I still think it would be so fun, but I could not hack it. I truly don't think I could. So, I wear these toe shoes. Oh, look at this. this work I'm doing, I just needed some instant payoff. We got ourselves some flowers. I can already see my vision coming to life. Look at this creeper. I should have put on some gardening gloves, but whatever. Good for my microbiome. Got some good fatty earthworms up in here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all of the big stuff in the ground first. And from there, I will um, start planting the smaller things and then I'm going to mulch. No, I'm gonna get the big stuff in the ground, then I'm gonna mulch, then I'm gonna plant the smaller things because I'm afraid if I plant the smaller things first, I'll get them mixed up with some of the like, ivy and I will mulch over them. Some of these roots are huge so I'm digging these deeper holes and I'm glad I am but um I think these are the roots to these vines. This worries me a little bit. So I've got the big stuff planted. 
And then I will be getting all of this stuff in the ground probably tomorrow. I'm feeling so good about how it's all turning out. Here's an aerial view. I love it. One day I'll tackle all of that. I would love for my whole yard to just be a big wild English garden. Day two of my pollinator garden project. I need to go back to the garden center and get just a little bit more mulch. Now, I'm not going in here planning on buying any more plants, but maybe I'll just walk around and acquaint myself with what plants they have, as if I didn't see enough yesterday. I think I've gotten bit by the plant bug. I got out of there only buying mulch. I need to prove to myself that I'm not gonna kill all these plants before I really start spending more money on them. All right, I probably should have gotten two more bags of mulch than I did, but we're gonna make it work. This rock right here with this moss on it is one of the rocks that sold me on this house. I love this moss. It's so beautiful. Real quick before we begin. One, today I'm wearing gloves. I think I should have yesterday. I feel like I destroyed my hands. Two, I get asked a lot about these shorts. They seem to confuse people, so let me just explain. They are shorts, they're drop crotch, inspired by my fashion icon, David Rose. I typically tend to wear them over my leggings whenever I'm on my period because I have kind of an irrational, but somewhat rational fear of bleeding through my leggings, and so I feel like I just need that extra layer of protection, you know? Got all the mulch down and I take it back. I think it ended up being just the right amount. So I like that it goes from more polished mulch back into a little bit more wild fern gully situation. So this is why I mulched first, because these plants are so little and delicate. If I had planted and then mulched, I think that I would have smothered some of these for sure. garden is done. I'm so excited to show you all. All right, let me give you a little tour. So we've got this little path. Goes up here. Oh. 
a bee just flew by. And there we have it. So now I'm just going to work for the rest of the summer, maintaining everything, trying to keep it weeded, trying to keep this ivy from overtaking, and just helping to get it all established and thriving. Part of me does want to say to all of these little guys, you know, look to your left, look to your right, uh, because half of you might not make it. But fingers crossed that all these little babies make it.